All right. Let's call today's meeting uh, to order. Madam Clerk, I have a roll call, please. Yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Kelly. Here. Mr. McKenna. Present. Ms. Collison. Here. Mr. Goodson. Here. Ms. McPherson uh, will be joining the meeting later on. You have a quorum. All right, very good. Uh, do we have any uh, additions or edits to the agenda? D, is everything in the order we kind of needed to be in today? I believe so. I'll make a motion to amend the agenda to add the Frisk as well as the Goldstein. Goodstein. Goodstein, sorry. No worries, you're so it's, close. It's right in front of me, too, <laughs> and that's the problem. <laughs> that's where I get yeah. extra embarrassed. <laughs> if, if I might make a um, slight adjustment, I did revise the agenda to add Frisk, okay. but I hadn't had a chance to add Goodstein, and we have one other um, for Miss Peace as well. And they're both economic disclosure forms. So it's all under 5A, 5A4. Oh, you were going to put them in A, 5A4? 5A4, um, G, and H. Okay, any other uh, additions? Okay. All those in favor of the agenda as amended, say aye. 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 Those no? All right, very good. Let's move on. Minutes from June 16th. Okay. Good right behind Where am I? So the stapled cop one. Oh, okay. Got it? Got it. Ah. I just went through that long path myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, edits to uh, the meeting from meeting minutes? Move to approve the minutes from the June 16 meeting. Second. I'll second. Favor say aye. 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 Those no. All right, very good. Let's take a look at our <coughs> consent agenda. Does anyone need time to look through the uh, consent agenda materials? Oh. How should we, normally we just approve it after we go through it, I'm assuming. Yeah. Usually we go through yeah. it and everyone does it at once, but we have two members present who are also subjects of it. So should we, how would we do the, any oh, recusals? Yeah, right. Well, 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 that means minimally we're, we'll have to pull um, Goodstein from the consent agenda because that'll have to be a separate. Ooh, and and <laughs> Oh, well, then, we won't have, then we won't have a quorum. Well, we can do no, it separately. Yeah, 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 we'll have to do So let's pull both of those from the consent agenda. Well, should we just go through these one at a time? Yeah, let's just do that. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, mind? Let's, let's do that it. Let's do it that way. Okay. So beginning with Austin. In that, in, in that sense, Jennifer, if we could we maybe just have these as items not bundled together in a consent agenda? Sure, I think you just make a motion to pull them off. Oh. You want to go through one each at a time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it just seemed easier, but e it, it doesn't matter. Well, you can go through them one at a time and then make a motion to approve a consent agenda with the exception of the pulled items, unless you find the. No, that's fine. That sounds good. Let's do that. Okay, so why don't we. Austin Quinn, any heartburn in there? I think we've already. Oh, yeah, we think we went around with that one, right? Yeah. Did we not do that one? No, we just discussed it, and this is sort of the, the, the disclosure requirement. Right. This is right. disclosure. In case okay, so anyone want to pull that? No. Uh, Julian Holland, anyone want to pull that? Does that look pretty routine? That looks fine. Bronson. Okay. We'll pull Ms. Callison. Yeah. We'll pull Ms. Callison. <laughs> 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 Three pages behind us. David Carlson. Let's see. Oh, right. He is in maintenance. Wife does music lessons. Wife does not. Yeah. Doesn't seem like there's much connection. Yeah. Um, this one, did you do this one last, last time, or is this a different one? Seems like stuff. we get a lot of private music lessons. Yeah. Was that a different <laughs> music <laughs> lesson? That's actually true. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Hi there. Hi, Lisa. This is Jennifer. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. okay. I can't. This, All right. So Lisa uh, Twissant is joining the meeting. Oh, here it is. It looks fine to me. It looks fine to you. So the peace one, both. Wait, wait we're on the peace one? Hold on. Sorry. We're, are, have we done this angel fund? Or the, am I, no, we're just, on? just yeah. doing this. Okay, I went yeah. far. I went too far. Got it. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Is, which one are we on now? Peace. So we had gone yeah, from peace. the packet to then peace. frisk and peas mm -hmm. were separate. Okay, so. Oh, okay. Frisk first. So I'm just saying frisk first because I have it. <laughs> it's yep, it's done. Frisk looks fine. Mm -hmm. Then we're pulling. And peas looks okay to me too. No, peas, she checked both. Yeah, she checked both. She checked both, but there's nothing on oh, the back. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. It's, I'm, it's, maybe did she, she not mean to? Was there any other sheets with hers? Or? No. Uh oh. Maybe we need to ask her to clarify. Yeah, let's pull that one from the consent agenda. She also she took out she she scratched out appointment and, and wrote to call to service. service. Just. Hmm. Yeah, I like that. It's more romantic. Call to yeah. service. So I like that too. It sounds mm. very World War One-y. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think we should pull out because it, it, there's no other attach-in explanation for what the the financials just might be if the, with the second box checked. Yep. Mm, I suspect it may be an okay. error. I wonder if it's an error. She, I mean, Ms. Peace is on our board of adjustment, so the board mm -hmm. that I staff. Um, I'd be happy to reach out to her and see if the, perhaps this was so. a mistake and mm -hmm. bring it back to the board next meeting. She has yeah. very active family too, so it'd be worth yeah. clarifying. Yeah, let's clarify. Okay. All right, I think that was it for that. Oh, so, no, uh, the aside from right peace, over your side, you were okay. Peace, you said I was okay. And uh, policy, uh, yeah. all those, uh, we have a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll move to approve the consent agenda with those pulled items. Right, second for that. Can I second it with my own name on there? We pulled your. We pulled your. Oh, crap. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. that's just a second, then. Yeah. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those no. All right. So the consent agenda passes, and then yeah, let's take pick up then. Um, uh, Madam Clerk, you're going to follow up if you could with the piece for us. Yes, that's uh, right. And then so let's take a look then at Goodstein. Let's take a look. Goodstein. <laughs> oh, this guy. This guy. Uh-oh. Yeah. Like Rebel motion, rouser. Motion to approve. I'm not Seconded. an expert in ethics. <laughs> Actually, I am. So let me tell you. Uh, motion and second. <laughs> Carry on. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those no? Okay, good. That passes. And then Paulson, another troublemaker. <laughs> Doesn't like she has any interest in the municipal contract, so I'll make a motion to approve. We have a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those no? Okay, that passes. We're just so productive. Getting care. work done. Oh, really? Our consent agenda. Let's move on to our request for advisory 2020 2. Now, D, as I recall, what had happened here was that some of the, the newer members wanted a chance to. Oh shoot! Did I have not researched that. I have not researched it. <laughs> uh, well, did we not have a quorum? We did not have a quorum, and so we needed right. some additional members too, and that included Becky. So we'll see if she also. So you didn't have a chance yet. Was I supposed to? I'm was, sorry. was was I supposed to uh, just read this, or was there other information that you were going? There were tapes. Tapes. You're supposed to listen to hours. Of uh, I dropped the ball on that one. You were going to send to them, I thought. Could, okay. could I suggest that we have a quorum with the three members that were part of that discussion yeah. and that perhaps mm -hmm. the members that were Who present would, could, could... Were you present for the Fort United State Angel Fund mm -hmm. stuff? Mm -hmm. I don't think so because it was Marsha no. back what? then. I think it was... Mm -hmm. I think it was Marsha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, I didn't come on until last October. I think that was, that Is was that terrible. right? And this one kept being... Yeah, this one, I, my recollection is that this, this one squeaked before Asia came on board. I, so I, I did have a chance to look at this, 
um, I did not listen to the tapes, um, but I did look at the material and the opinion. And so I don't know if I can act as a act as part of a quorum if I've you know since the opinion is based on the material facts that were Gosh, this is a year disclosed old. or it was Becky wasn't involved either. No, right. I thought that the discussion, um, the, the, the current opinion or draft, omitted a significant part of the discussion on the tapes, um, which was the Terry section. But uh, so that we would no, but there was a section that Terry analysis that was not never incorporated, as far as I know, because you never did anything with uh, Marsha's draft. Right. 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 So and Lisa took over. Uh, and did. Right? Lisa, did you? Listen to I me. did. I wrote this. I listened to the whole oh. thing. Oh, okay. I take that back. Um, yes. And um, I I, I'm trying to think of what <laughs> you're referring to, Dan. I, there may be something that was discussed. Gosh, I wish I had my notes. I mean, I went back over my notes. I listened to the tape multiple times. Um, there was some discussion that we had about a direction, a potential direction for this opinion. And I felt that it was an incorrect interpretation of the code. And I'm trying to remember exactly what that was. So Dee, if you can, you seem to have better recollection than I do. I try to write this the way that I thought it should be. Mm -hmm. um, and we did kind of go around and round. I will tell you that much. I wish I had my notes. Like I said, I wish I had my notes in front of me. And I could tell you, I probably if I jog my flagging memory a bit or if you could do that for me D, it probably will come back to me but I, I wrote this analysis the way that I thought the analysis should be well I guess the, the first question maybe is procedural is should we proceed when people haven't listened to the tapes and are those easier easily enough to produce well you produced them for Lisa right that um, I, yeah and I, for the rest of the group I think Jennifer produced them for the, the new board members. I don't, I did not, Lisa. Oh, um, oh you did it. Some of them okay, are executive session, and so I was able to easily put them where Lisa could get them on our internal drive. Mm -hmm. If we want to have other board members listen to them, we can arrange for that. I will say it's it's going to be, how, how long, Lisa, is like two and a half hours worth of, three hours worth of discussion? Well, no, 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 no. Not um, that much? I'm trying to think for this. I mean, and when I look at this, I mean, I wrote this a little while ago, guys. Um, it was based on, the, there was an email from Joe Morrison to D, right. and then there was just the June 11th meeting that we had um, where Steve Trimble was present. And we had a law and Joe Morrison. We had a long discussion with those guys. It was probably about an hour's worth of discussion. I think my brain is kind of. It, it, it was a longer discussion than we normally have because we were all kind of confused about what this, you know, what the um, the Forty Nine State Angel Fund was and how the advisory committee worked and what Mister Trimble was going to be doing. And he kind of trimmed down the scope of what he was intending to do um, over the course of our conversation. And, I, you know, I think the way I would feel most comfortable since Dee brought up that she felt that there was a significant portion of the discussion that's lacking um, from, you know, the opinion or at least discussion in the opinion, I would be most comfortable if people would go back and listen to the recording so we could have an informed discussion rather than taking my word for what we all talked no, about. But, no, but Lisa, I meant that pre your opinion, that when Marsha did it, we had modified. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That there yeah, was a significant, yeah. we kept saying, well, we need to incorporate the part that Terry talked about. So, no, that was pre yeah. you. That was oh. pre you. So, do you feel comfortable? Um, uh, with permission of the chair. Do you feel comfortable without your notes discussing this or, I mean, I hate to, uh, if, if you think that this is fairly representative of the discussion, I'm not sure we need everybody to listen yeah, to an hour. Yeah, I, I think it's, it is representative of the discussion. I will tell you, and I bet you guys are going to remember this. I bet Jack, you, and Terry will kind of remember this when I mention it. Mr. 
turmoil kind of came in. And if you look at the email, like the underlying email, mm -hmm. it was a, it was less clear what Mr. Trimble's role was going to be in terms of this, you know, his involvement in this, this whatever this was. And in the course of the discussion, he basically said, all I'm going to be doing is providing data. Because mm -hmm. I think Mr. Trimble kind of realized as we were talking that if he does a whole heck of a lot more, if he plays any more of a role in, for example, sort of shaping um, the analysis that would be presented to the advisory committee, that he would look like he'd be in a position to potentially steer the outcome of this thing in a manner that could benefit his company, which was Arctic Solar. So he, during the course of that discussion, he kind of honed down, you know, the scope of what he'd be doing to just providing data. That and, you nice. know, whatever you guys, I'm totally cool with whatever you guys want to do. If people feel, you know, I, I take no offense whatsoever. This one's been out there for a while. If people feel they'd rather kind of listen to it to get up to speed on it, or if we want to talk about it now, either, you know, it's totally fine with me, whatever you guys think. Can I ask, I, I guess a question that may or, may or may not sort of clarify. So I didn't listen to any of this or I wasn't part of the discussion, but a, as this opinion reads, it doesn't look to me, I mean, what, what, we, what we are seeing in this opinion is that there, is going to be an official action. It sounds like if he does any more than provide data, there would definitely be official action. You've sort of decided even the minimal action that he's going to take in, in these discussions of everything he might do, which is providing data, does constitute an official action. So mm -hmm. all we're saying is that he needs to, and he clearly has a financial interest, mm -hmm. even if he doesn't yeah. have a pecuniary benefit, He, we're under, under 180H2 on the second page of the opinion, he has an ownership interest in the mm -hmm. organization. So it doesn't really matter if he has this, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, so I guess my, my point is I don't think that anything we say in this opinion actually depends all that much mm -hmm. on whatever additional discussion there was. And then all we've said is that, yes, yeah. he's taking official action. Yes, we think, yes, he has a financial interest. And so we're yep. saying here are the factors to decide if it's yeah. substantial, and then you have to go forth. So to me, we're not, yeah. I think we're on pretty solid ground um, to issue this opinion as it's currently written without going back and hearing all the potential details. Are you okay with footnote number three? That's probably the main place where we put some chips on. Uh, what, footnote number three is on what page? Page 19. Yes. Um, it should just trigger my recollection, you guys. I just oh. want to say this. There was much discussion. Now I remember what it was that is kind of missing from this. If you guys went back and listened to the tapes, you will hear us have a detailed discussion about our analysis of whether or not the financial or private interest was substantial. Like in other words, we went through and actually did the analysis under 1.15.060E. And that is not really what we should have done. And it's mm -hmm. not consistent with what we've done in other opinions. We just went further than we needed to. Because you are right, Asia. What we say here is, you know, we say here, what I say in that paragraph on page three about whether or not this is official, is official action is that, you know, he's really not substantially availing the merits of any proposal. And, you know, here's kind of what he made clear. He arguably wouldn't, you know, substantially impact the merits of a recommendation, except maybe to a certain extent extent that the data might be needed for the proposal to be properly evaluated or developed and assessed. But we say out of an abundance of caution, we're going to consider this to be and then we go on and we identify ex exactly what you said, Aisha, which is that that gets you into having the, the, the you know, the commission itself is going to have the obligation to do the, the analysis under Section E and that's pretty much it. And we talk about his obligation to disclose to the advisory commission his potential financial interest in, you know, providing solar power services to property owners who might get financing from a green bank. And it's then the job of the advisory commission to do, you know, the balancing factor test under mm -hmm. subpart E. Mm -hmm. So I think you're actually correct, Asia, about how you're looking at this. 
but we went for it as a board and we did this balancing test under E mm-hmm. and that is that's really not our place to do it's the board that has the obligation to do that and that's consistent mm-hmm. with what we did in the Girdwood um the Girdwood uh, mm-hmm. opinion that Jack wrote and it's also consistent with I know other smaller opinions that we've written as well yeah, you know, I wonder though for the Girdwood one because now I'm thinking about this. I mean, the Girdwood board is an elected board, isn't it? And this board is Jeez. not right. Is this board an elected board? Yes. This is, no. this I is, don't think it's an elected board. It, it, I don't it, believe that it, it is. Yeah, and if you look in the conflict of interest section, right, it says a jurisdiction of the board to determine a violation under this chapter by an elected official for participation in a matter after disclosure is expressly limited to the sufficiency of the disclosure. What number so, are you at? Uh, that's on page 8. That's uh, 060, 060 F. Okay, let's see. I, uh, Terry, I thought we had the same thing for boards. Though. Yeah, because the procedure for disclosure yeah, for F2. the employee is the ethics officer and for board members and elected officials. Seems like you do the disclosure to mm-hmm. the body. You do the disclosure to the body. Okay. E says that oh, it's for elected saying. officials that it is expressing mm. only the jurisdiction of that body to um, evaluate your conflict of interest. So Interesting. for the assembly members, it is one hundred percent of the assembly. We can only evaluate whether you gave enough disclosure when it's an assembly person or elected board. Um, presumably, one could, and and Dee and I probably have different feelings about this, but presumably, one could disclose to an unelected board, and then someone could later file a complaint to the Board of Ethics saying, yeah, they disclosed, and the board erred in saying that the member mm-hmm. did not have a conflict of interest. Because it wasn't an appropriate body to disclose to. No. Because it wasn't elected. Well, or, or that it, it's, it's that, the, in some sense, you could say that, that the board made a mistake and did not properly apply the code. Now, if it's the assembly that does that, it doesn't matter. They're elected officials, and the code gives carves out them a special privilege to determine for themselves if there's a conflict of interest or not. Okay. Here, the procedure is you do have to reveal to your board, if you're not an elected official, if you're on a non-elected board, you have to reveal to the board the potential disclosure, the board should review it in light of these factors, but there's not really a safe harbor carved out like there is for an elected official. Your board could say, oh yeah, that's not a conflict of interest, you're good to go. Mm-hmm. A citizen at the board could be like, you've got to be kidding me, files a complaint with us mm-hmm. saying that was a substantial conflict of interest. How did you and square that though with D though? You are F2G? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because we can't sanction anyone anyway, so that's <laughs> some power we have. To start with. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Well, we can't even make a recommendation for sanctions. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can you guys, Terry, where is your section where you, um, I think I just missed, it's so hard to not be with you guys. Um, where is this section that basically says that this board because or tell me which sections to look at so my my limited brain can try to do some limited sort of critical thinking <laughs> yeah it's it's o six o yeah f yep and then i'm looking at f e two and then jack has e. decided yes. f d as in david yes it's two limited I mean, d, it's true. Sure. d does seem to provide a certain amount of safe harbor at least from sanction mm-hmm. but then that does seem like there needs to be, I guess it would say in judge language, right? some harmonizing needs to take place here between D and D. I mean, I suppose someone could complain to the board, our board, the Board of Ethics, and we could require recusal uh-huh. on part of that person, so we wouldn't sanction them, but we could say, no, that is a conflict of interest, and particularly for long-term projects, we could say, in the future, <laughs> you may not continue to participate. Yeah, we could make a recommendation for action. Or something. I think we could make a recommendation. But how would we do that with in this case with the angel fund case? Like, would, would would you say like, oh, you can't do anything with the green bank? Like, I mean, it's just, it sounds it gets more. Yeah, how would, recuse, it, it, it's how would gives, he recuse himself? It would give me pause. The the main thrust of this opinion is that 
we've got a little footnote saying we think you're okay, but by and large you need to reveal it to your board and they need to make the determination. Um, that's true as far as it goes, but it might mean if there's no complete safe harbor carved out, then unlike when we deal with the assembly where we do just tend to say, that's your business, you figure it out. I wonder if we should make, if we should basically move that footnote into the body of the opinion. In other words, should we, it might actually be our place as the Board of Ethics to take a stand mm. on whether his interest as presented to us is a substantial interest or not. Because that's why, in one way of looking is that's why he's asking now, right? Or he was asking, but you know, he's asking for an advisory opinion because it's not 100% up just to his board whether it's a substantial conflict or not. It is potentially reviewable by us as well. And so why not find out from the Board of Ethics up front whether we think it's a substantial conflict or not? Whereas it is true, as Lisa says, when elected boards come to us, for supervisors in Kernwood or assembly, we've tended to stay pretty hands off about that and say, you know, that that is the code carves that out pretty much entirely for your elected officials. And one of the perks of being an elected official is that you decide amongst yourselves whether that's a conflict or not, because you are answerable to the voters at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. If you you know if you allow conflicts that are beyond the beyond. Whereas unelected board members, we don't have that kind of mechanism. We're the accountability mechanism for unelected board members. But I still think that's putting the cart before the horse, though. Like, we're, the procedure still says they're supposed to disclose, the board makes a decision, and then someone can bring it to us. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, we're giving an advisory opinion, but at the same time, I also want to let the board who has more expertise theoretically and what they're doing and what the actual situation is and what the purpose is, right? And make that decision without us poking them too much one way or the other. Because I, I think that this board, like, it took a long time to figure out what they did, even. <laughs> so, <laughs> seriously, and what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it seems and like it, they're in a much better case. They're in a better yeah. position to make that decision in the first place. And if we start saying, no, you're fine, in a situation where we don't fully understand what they do, I wonder if we're obviating some of the value of having the board make that decision first. Okay, so would you, would you be comfortable then just like leaving the footnote as a footnote? And this, is the, this is the footnote that you're referring to on page 19. Mm -hmm. Yeah, footnote 3, because you notice there we do sort of say, and this is sort of like what I recall was the conclusion of our discussion that when he came in, and as you see from the email, it wasn't clear what he was doing. And some of the stuff was like, oh, he might be advising. He might actually be helping craft proposals. We're like, well, yeah, that's yeah. a crazy conflict of interest. No. Yeah. And he's like, no, 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 no. And I think, yeah, as, as someone said, like, I think as he was talking to us, maybe he realized, like, no, 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 I'm just going to be sort of providing data mm -hmm. to the board. And then we're like, well, if all you're doing is providing data, boy, you have an interest, clearly. But is it substantial? And one of the standards is, like, how direct is the connection between what you're doing and your interest and the conversation is that like you know it seems like that's far enough downstream where it's indirect enough that you do have an interest but it's not substantial so we don't think it's a substantial conflict of interest but it, it, I agree with that I think that's what we said right I like to ace this point though if we I think we probably could do this one today if Abram you and Asher are comfortable voting on it because the, the findings of like the factual background doesn't matter a whole lot mm-hmm I think it. I think Lisa did a very nice job of accurately stating what's the procedure that they should go through and how they should go about it. And so I'm. Yeah. I think it is, as Asia said, it's more like we're just telling them these are the procedures you should take, but you guys have to make this decision by yourself. And then I think maybe the question for all of us, but maybe especially uh, the newer the newer folks here is how there, there's still a lot of language in this opinion that heavily hints that this is not a substantial financial interest. I mean, I, I think it might be cleaner if we start on page 19. The issue in this case is whether there's a conflict of interest. I think all we would have to say is Mr. Trimble has a financial interest as defined in the code because he has an ownership interest in the organization and he arguably will receive a pecuniary benefit um, from this project. I think we could stop there rather than going down this chain of events that would have to happen for him to have a substantial benefit. There's also some other language about um, uh, what is it? And I should kind of interrupt. Yeah. I, I 
but I thought that the real, to me the issue was whether there was a we we know he has a financial interest, but whether it was substantial. But if he doesn't have a financial interest, but it's, don't, don't we say he does? Well, we say we say he has a potential financial interest. And I think uh -huh. there is no arg there's no argument that he has a financial interest by being the owner. Right. And I think that the reason that it says potential, I'm guessing the reason it says potential financial interest is because we think it's only a potential substantial financial interest. Uh, hold on. I thought it was potential. <laughs> right? I thought it was potential because they ha that the angel fund actually hasn't created the green bank yet. Right. That's why I thought it was potential. Well, but then it's... Uh, sorry, I'm reading the third paragraph. Because Mr. Trimble so on page, page 19, 19. Okay. yeah. Because Mr. Trimble has a poten potential financial interest in providing data to the project team, he should disclose the interest, however hypothetical or attenuated it may seem. I mean, that that's what I'm talking about. I mean, there's a lot of language in here that mm -hmm. that hedges. I think, I think those though draw from the, our prior decision in the GBOS case because we've kind of said like. It, yeah, you may speculatively in the future get a financial interest out of whatever official action is taken, but regardless of how hypothetical or attenuated it is, you should still discuss it. Well, disclosure is your friend. Yeah. But, right, but he doesn't have a, the, the potential comes from whether or not they're going to even do, do the, the Green Bank, bank program. Mm -hmm. Because there's no doubt that if they... Yeah, it's, are they going to do the Green Bank program, and if they do the Green Bank program, <laughs> things that kind of have to happen or is anybody who participates in it actually going to want to contract with him there's just lots of weird yeah well it's been a I year see. I see. Is green, yeah. do they do green bank is it is that we do we know <laughs> what happened i really don't know Did yeah. ever happen? there should be an outcome okay then i um i withdraw my comments and i am um fine with the opinion as written because as we've said i don't think I think that the facts as listed here, mm -hmm. which result in the opinion as written mm -hmm. here, um, I can comfortably vote to approve. And actually, Asha, I think uh, that you made a good point because I do think there's actually think something that. missing from this opinion. Yeah. And that is, I think that I, I mean, it was a hard one to write, you guys, because our discussion was so much focused on those, the balancing of those factors. And we were just kind of all over the board trying to understand everything. It was not an easy one. But I do think that where I, you know, kind of fell short here is that I didn't really nail down why he would have a potential financial interest because obviously he's got an ownership interest and done. And I think that is a missing piece. And I think there needs to be a sentence or two added about that. I focus more on the hypothetical piece. I have the definition of what constitutes a financial interest, but I didn't put that little piece in that says, duh, he has an ownership interest, so clearly he would be someone who would have a potential financial interest if all of these things occurred. So I think that piece needs to be added Lisa, at a bare minimum. I feel like it's in the conclusion, though, right? Mr. Tremble should disclose to the SAS Advisory Commission a potential financial interest in providing solar power services to property owners. I think, I think what Aisha was saying, though, Abram, is that um, she wanted it to be abundantly clear. I, I think she made a good point that you know, okay. financial interest is defined as someone having, at least in part, having an ownership interest in the organization. You know the guy does. So that really would be the foundation for why we'd even be looking at whether or not you'd have a financial interest. And then I'd go on to say, you'd only have one if all these different things occurred. And then, you know, would he even be involved in taking official action? I think there needs to be a sentence. And Aisha, are you tracking me on this? Because yeah, I, I actually just, agree with you about what that. What is this after yeah. the first sentence? The issue in the, sorry, yeah. back to the top of page 19 yep. after the first sentence the issue in this case yep. well but I think you could, you could just say something about first yep. Mr. Trimble has a has a potential financial interest because he has an ownership yep. interest in his organization yep. also as the owner of blah 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 he'd receive a pecuniary benefit I think that doesn't it say as the owner yep. of Arctic Solar Ventures Mr. Trimble would receive oh it a does you're right yeah, but it even does, you're right you're right I think yeah, you're right my only point is that even if he wouldn't even if we didn't do the whole analysis so if if Green Bank happens, I think he has a financial interest because as the owner of the organization, even if he would never actually receive mm -hmm. any. I don't think you'd have to do the pecuniary benefit analysis just because under part two, you have a financial interest in the organization if you have an ownership interest in it. Well, he'd have a financial interest in the organization, but would the organization have be receiving or expect to receive a pecuniary benefit mm -hmm. 
Because right? if it's not, then having a financial interest in I might own part of a hot dog stand in downtown. But if I don't have any particular expectation but that my hot dog stand is going to get something out of the official action, mm -hmm. then I don't even have a financial but, interest in the official action, right? And so yeah. the question is, as so that's the first part of the definition, right? So the first part of the definition for financial interest on 18 is the receipt of a pecuniary benefit and the expectation of one. And then two is about, oh, and by the way, we don't just mean you personally. If you have an ownership interest in an organization, and that organization is going to receive a pecuniary benefit or has a reasonable expectation of receiving one, then you're on the hook for that. That counts as an interest of yours. Mm -hmm. The yep. question I think that we got there is that yep. his connection as owner, part owner of this venture, yep. and the Green Bank development, it's so attenuated that not only did we, I think that we, our feeling was that not only is it not even a substantial interest, it's not even clear if we're at the point where he even has a financial interest yet. Yep. Because the Green Bank doesn't even exist yet. And even when it comes to yeah. exist, several other they things may not give money to any projects, but then hire yep. him and like, yeah. Yeah. So at least that was, that was the idea. I mean, I'm fine just saying. You know, he's involved enough in this industry, and as an owner, he has a financial interest. And then keeping our footnote that, by and large, yep. we don't see it as being a substantial one, but code nonetheless still requires him to yep. read, uh, disclose it to the board. And I actually wouldn't mind adding a line like Jack saying that that, that that board is in a better position to understand the nuances and facts of the situation to make yep. a determination. I don't want to entirely, I mean, my, my concern long term in terms is is I don't want to entirely punt it away to these boards because we've certainly had cases many, many years ago where it was the opposite. People were coming to us and it clearly was a conflict of interest. And I absolutely did not want to say, yeah. well, that's just yeah. up to your board to determine. I wanted to say, at least I wanted this board to have the authority to say, you may not do that. That's a substantial conflict of interest. Yeah, now, and again, Terry, you're, the... you're thinking about that is because that this particular board is not an elected no, board, it's yeah, different right. from like a board of supervisors, and those folks are more, um, those folks, folks get to make their own decision more than say this 49th State Fund Advisory Commission, is that kind of the thinking? Yeah, like if an assembly member came to us, you know, for advice, and it was a pretty wild conflict of interest, we could tell them, in our view, this is a really wild conflict, but it would look like this opinion, but at the end of the day, it's up to the assembly. You still need to say, we can't in any way tell you you can't participate. Like, looking at the code, you know, I don't think we could punish someone retroactively, but looking at the code, if you're on an unelected board, it seems like we do have the purview to sort of say, look, this is a substantial conflict of interest and you may not participate. I think only after element. the board takes it first, though. Yeah, my question well, is this. Maybe, but what if they come to us first, right? I mean, if they come to us first, like in this case, right? If they come to us first asking, yeah. and we see mm -hmm. this is pretty clearly a substantial mm -hmm. conflict of interest. Well, then I think we see something like this. The board, which is essentially what we said, the board will want to consider this, that, and the other thing, and mm -hmm. hint heavily, but I'm not sure that we can say you may not do this. I think we can, the Board of Ethics. <laughs> you know, the, the code clearly forbids participating in an official action where you have a substantial conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. If you know, if the board of ethics concludes that there's a substantial conflict of interest and you're not an elected mm -hmm. official, then it looks to me that the code precisely allows us to say that is forbidden by the code of ethics. And you're right; we certainly can't physically prevent someone from doing it. We're saying, like, you've asked us, is this well, a violation of the code? But then also under the common law, then whatever actions they take could be voidable. So mm -hmm. you don't want your action labeled um, mm -hmm. conflict of interest, especially by the ethics board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm having a real hard un time understanding, like under F2, where it says board members and elected officials. Yeah. I guess one of my question is, is there something board members who are board members that we're talking about are we only are we only referring to certain types of boards is this 49th state angel fund advisory commission i know it's not a decision making board it's a okay, well, recommending board but so lisa let make, me step in lisa let me step in yeah yeah please in the ethics yeah. we define board members at the beginning members of the public appointment right. serve on useful stuff what, what page are you on? That, that's uh page three and it's under the definitional mm -hmm. section. So board members are your non-elected board members. They are what we call Title yeah. IV boards. They're administrative. 
Uh, well, they, yeah. they may be confirmed by the assembly. But And then the elected officials are assembly, school board, and the board members that are elected. Uh, yeah. like road service areas. So this is clearly, um, when it says board, it really is the non-elected board members, the uh, but, cadre yeah. of volunteers that help us every day. Yeah. But in Ely, yeah. the board that's being referred to in E, Lisa, is us. It's the Board of Ethics. So the jurisdiction of the Board of Ethics to determine a violation under this chapter by an elected official for participation in a matter after disclosure is expressly limited to the sufficiency of the disclosure. In other words, our jurisdiction in this matter when it comes to elected officials is only was the disclosure adequate. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And I, and I think it's it's not so much giving them a carve out as saying that it's inappropriate for an administrative board to have oversight over the assembly in terms of invalidating actions. Um, they're elected officials. But anyway, it's a pretty distinct carve out for elected. You know, and it does look like there is a carve out for, indeed, right, for board members generally, right, that they can't be sanctioned if they follow the determination of their board, right? I mean, so, but the question would be could someone, like in this case, you know, if this, suppose this was a real, so, so suppose he came in with what his first proposal was, right, the email makes it look like, oh, I'm going to be advising and I'm actually going to craft a proposal and this and that, and it's like, does this board have the authority to say, well, you, now that you've asked, yes, that would be a substantial conflict of interest yeah. and that would be a violation of the code. Are there other sections of the code where someone could be sanctioned for acting you know, as a in board this member. One? No, I'm just in the oh. in, in the Anchorage Municipal Code in general. I'm just wondering if this informs other sections as well, or I don't think so. I mean, I, I'm sh they might have a general one-liner. You don't, you know, avoid yeah. conflicts of interest, but it's not really addressed. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even sure they have that in Title Four. It's just funny. This is, I think, the only time the word "sanction" is used. Yeah. So, what does "sanction" mean? Does yeah. Does that mean that they can't be, like, fined or jailed, or in the sense that I think of sanction, or does it mean that they can't be? Um, well told not to act in a certain way. Well, I, mean, I, I, think, I think it just that word sanction probably comes from the old code before this one where they did talk about investigations and sanctions and this and that and 15 pages of due process that and investigative <laughs> stuff that none of us could do and it was a silliness. And so we, t we took out as much of that language as possible throughout the code and personally I think it was just, uh, again it was old code sanction which they, they meant something and we've, we've only had a couple cases, uh, Terry's been on both of them, where we actually make a re made a recommendation uh, to uh, remove a board member, one was to remove a board member and one was to, one was to force uh, uh, some individuals to attend Terry's uh, college uh, philosophy class <laughs> on ethics. <laughs> <laughs> they really balked at that one. Oh, so it's going to cost them money, and they had to leave their job in these hours. Um, oh, they came, came before <laughs> for us and said things that were not true. And it was very obvious. And uh, uh, but at anyway, but I, again, I think sanction, unfortunately, uh, Asia came from old code when, I, when we talked about <laughs> like punishing with the sword. And <laughs> so then we can't. So then. So then, what? So what is? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What, is sanction, what can we do now for sanctions instead? Like, yeah, right on chalkboard a thousand times. I will not do. Yeah. Well, well, that has been, as, yeah. as, as Dee said, you know, yeah, we've recommended people be removed. We've recommended that people receive ethics training. So um, sanctions, whatever are, our creativity the, the you can decide. Oh, and then we, we and, and for that one where we asked the board, we also asked for the assembly. We think that a certain contract yeah. right, yeah. should be. Oh, terminated. And terminated, yeah. right? And the contract so was to like terminate a, a very a, a big contract, too. Yeah, right. So, so I guess. How about just what if we what if we yeah. do this for this opinion <laughs> so that we can? So first of all, I'd like to apologize. I misread section H as a one and a two, and there's a one. But never mind. So my whole thing about the ownership, forget that nonsense. Um, and I will give you your twenty minutes of your life back. Um, <laughs> Maybe what we should say in footnote three is whether a financial or private interest is substantial is left to the initial determination of the body in which the public servant is a member. And we can take out the word discretion so that we're not inadvertently given, giving yep. them sort of final voting rights or final appeal rights. Mm -hmm. And we can say something about determination. And why don't we even, it? why don't we maybe cite F2 Does that so, help? Well, yeah, I mean, I think. And, and just say it's left to the initial determination. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh huh. Yeah, and then maybe take out the not the Board of Ethics clause at the end of that sentence. Sure. I don't think that's true. I mean, or at least there's a re we can, and again, it would be worth us at some point to have a, a broader conversation about that. But my reading of the code is that that's not necessarily true. Yeah, I think I disagree, but I'd like to talk about it more at some point. I just, maybe for this one, at this point, we've opined and advised, and I think that since we're not particularly concerned about it, you know, it makes sense to send it back to the board. So, Aisha, your suggestion there would be just, um, you know, the word discretion would be replaced with initial determination, which seems or very logical. Oh, I think that's perfect, yeah. Word. Yeah. And then and then at the end of that, just put a site to 1.15160F2? I think so. But Correct. just to point out that that's the procedure. Yep, I think so, yeah. And then just, yeah, and the then procedural move, section. And then is there anything else on the text of that, that footnote that you guys would like to see changed? I just remove not the board of ethics at the end of the first sentence. Oh, so I think it's oh just we'll get rid of that. Okay, I'm with you. I got it. Body, and then let's just be silent on the rest until we... You know, yeah. So one day when we wrap our head around what we, yeah. how we really want to approach these kinds of non-elected I get it. I mean, I, I hear you. Um, it makes good sense. And is there anything else? I think I have one thing in here where I call the commission a committee or something. I can make that little change. But any other substantive changes that you guys would like to make to the text of this? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. So I think yeah I think I don't but what what so what can you do with this document is my question like what did you plan so we 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 sent this back to him so what what did we empower him to accomplish he can give the data without worrying about violating the ethics code well, I think we already he gets coverage yeah, yeah, we did tell him this already yeah okay so so what do we, imagine if this were timely right we were deciding <laughs> yeah, right now. Okay. one he would know that it's magical and then, again this is why yeah. i think this is why i think i don't want to hand entire jurisdiction off to that board because one we're saying there are certain things that you could do that would in fact be violations of the code and yep. your board might disagree but we're the board of ethics right and so we're right. telling you asked us for an opinion that's our view on that particular matter Two, in this particular case, we're saying, by and large, you need to go to your board. If I were him, you were empowered to cite footnote number three, saying, by the way, unless you see something that the board likes, then they, by and large, don't think this is a problem, as long as I'm just providing data. Sure, right? sure. So we've given him advice. He knows he needs to curtail what he's doing, maybe com think compared to what he was initially planning on doing. And two, he knows as long as he curtails that, he should be able to go to his board and cite this opinion and say, the Board of Ethics, by and large, thinks that there isn't a problem here, but I still nonetheless need to disclose to you, the, whatever board this is, here's my potential conflict and, and let them decide. Because as Jack said, they might see problems that we don't because they're more familiar yeah. with the industry and the process. He also knows that he needs to disclose it. <laughs> that's the most, and that's the, I feel like that's the most important thing. Yeah. 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 And then, Abert, if he, because of the kind of coverage he gets, then he can, you know, if he ends up getting a contract, you know, through that green bank, you know, bank, and he's, you know, both property owners want to contract with him for solar power service, he's okay because his made the determination that his provision of data was did not rise to the level of a, you know, at least we didn't we well as long as the you know commission reaches that conclusion, I guess. Which presumably they did. I'd love to know how this thing ended. <laughs> I know, that's not a real question. Is there a green bank right now? I want to know. Do you want that's me what to I want to know is, is there a green bank? I deal with them a lot, I can yeah. ask. But I guess, yeah, I guess, suppose that's what happened. You're right, Jack. We gave him an oral decision on the spot, and then this got so put on the back burner for that reason. It was like, well, he already knows what we decided, and it's already done. And then once it was several months old, it really just sort of. So I guess I have one th more. I'm sorry to stick stay with this one, guys. I know we want to move on, um, but he's also on the advisory committee of the State Angel Fund, and he's providing the data for um, solar inf solar power information. Correct? So he, he's he's doing those two things. Mm -hmm. Correct. And that's still pretty far away from this idea of him receiving substantial benefits if Green Bank does end up giving loans to people who use his company. Yeah. 
to retrofit their house. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just realizing the whole he's on the actual like from, I'm collecting data because I happen to be an expert in the field. And yeah. then we are acknowledging a lot of these boards are set up this way. You have people on the boards who are experts in the field, right. but that so, means so. they also often do have economic interests. In I the understand. Field. So yeah, no avoiding I get that. it. So we want to give some leeway, but as it got closer, suppose the Green Bank does get created, and now the board's starting to make decisions, substantive decisions about who's going to get what or how. To, now you're getting closer and closer to what is probably a substantial conflict of interest. Right. But just right. data collecting. Yeah, I mean, could he skew it in a way that there's going to be a green bank that's created yeah. that in turn will f maybe, 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 and for but us, no, once I like you get the two or three maybes, yeah. it's like well, it's probably. I, I like the what you said though. We want to leave room for experts to be able to be on these boards. Um, that's really important too. So, so I did just notice that the G bus set up for our conflict of interest discussion is still still there. <laughs> still, <laughs> still, oh my God, you're right. Like a year, right? It's like, yeah, it's a good little summary. You take a picture of it. Wow. So, <laughs> Mr. Chair, would the board entertain a motion on this <laughs> item? Yeah, I mean, do we want to add a footnote about the Nordic ski trails? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the draft opinion subject to the changes to the footnote three that we discussed in the meeting. Uh, I second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. All right. Motion passes. Lisa, thank you for your work. Thank you for bringing this <laughs> one over you, to the Lisa. finish line. Hey, no problem. I I have, I'm gonna, I'll make these little changes, and I will send it to you, Jennifer, for... Um, for Terry to do his magic. Okay. Oh. And then Lisa, I, yeah. um, I am going to try to add a call on this phone. Um, to oh, phone. should I jump no, off? No, no, I think you're going to be just fine. Um, okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm telling you if I happen to drop you, I'll call you back. Okay. Okay, then okay. I'm going to call no in Miss Wint Pearson uh, to join the board. Great. Hi Becky, you are with the Board of Ethics. Can you hear can you Perfect. hear me okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I'm gonna attempt to merge calls because Lisa is also calling in. All right, Lisa and Becky, are you both with us? This is Becky, I'm here. Thank you. Lisa, are you with us? Yes, I am. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, let's move on then to uh, <laughs> request for advisory 21-4. Uh, um, and um, do we have a draft on that? Yes. Oh, we do. Mm -hmm. It's in there. It's not it's confidential. In the That's when Jason came by and talked to us. Is that that's mm -hmm. what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. I think we should address this opinion to Wait, Biz and us. Oh, oh right. Yes. Uh, that was the meeting I had to leave early, so I was yeah. not here for this discussion. Right? I was like, what the heck? Do you want to practice your hat throwing skills? Yeah. Oh, no. You guys go off <laughs> and do. I got a little bit. I'm gonna earn some points. <laughs> I probably should have had this discussion earlier, but when we were talking about these, is this something for executive session, or is this something Well, we could have brought that up last yeah. time, but I thought the discussion was so, uh, mm -hmm. it was probably a good discussion for the public to have yeah. access to. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the type that should be. And this one, the confidentiality is waived, right? Right, so. yeah. Okay. Becky, do you have this opinion before you, this uh, draft 21-4? 20, no, I don't. I was looking to find it in uh, the emails that were circulated and didn't see it. I apologize if I missed it. I think it was attached to the email 
the initial, the first agenda email, the non-confidential. It started with the agenda and then had however many 20 pages behind it. And it starts on helps. page 17. Ah, uh, got it. Okay. Or page 21. Uh, right? No, I'm not seeing it here. That's June 16th. Yeah, I think oh, this, sorry. this one starts on page 21. Does that help? Thank you, Ah, okay. Becky, do you have it? I am working on getting to there. Mm -hmm. I apologize. I now Uh, I think actually we're sort of in a similar situation to where we were last time, Terry, where even though you weren't here for the discussion, I think most of this is just an explanation of what the code says. And so mm -hmm. if you, I think it'd be fine for you to weigh in if you're comfortable, because there's not a lot of facts in here about, like, specifics. I think that's probably right. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, if you yeah. feel like you want to. Yeah. Well, we also have a quorum either way. So either way, right. Um, I, just, I think this is a very good summary of sort of where we landed after this. Um, yeah, absolutely. I have one small structuring suggestion. Um, just since we go through the code sections, A, B, and Lisa, you need a heading under B that says waiver. Okay, stay with me. Okay, hold on. Oh, okay, I got it. I'm with you. Um, and then I would just say Thank that you. in the discussion, right now, one, two, and three track C, A, and B. I just maybe moved okay. two to one, three I'll, I'll to two, and one to three. Order. So we're just tracking mm -hmm. A, B, and C in the okay. discussion. Just okay. That's fine. Yes, that makes sense. That works. Otherwise, I think it's. Uh, I think it. 
this. Works for me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I have two questions. One, Chair, one on footnote two. Um, he did not resign from his position. Maybe just say he left his position or okay. he officially was terminated. Left, I'll just say left his position. Left his position, okay. Um, and then my only other question, Lisa, is you and I, since this um, uh, opinion was written in the meeting, had to deal with administrative unit. So someone who yes. left an administrative unit. So I'm trying to figure out what that matter here. So I would think his, his administrative unit is the mayor's office. But does that really come up in anything he's asked us about? I mean, so maybe it's a non-issue in this particular fact pattern. Mm -hmm. So we, um, Lisa and I were asking yeah. formally about um, someone who was leaving an administrative unit where he had been involved with the administrative unit, uh, uh, substantially involved about four or five years ago, and then left to a different part of the city. And then, uh, so, well, wait a minute, that was five years ago. Um, uh, and we said, well, you know, interesting, you're, you're leaving municipal service. You're right, the administrative unit was, you know, five years ago. But maybe there just none of that comes up with Jason. Um, so it's interesting, uh, Lisa, just because we had said we went around and around yeah. on that concept. But is there, does that apply here at all? Because he was, the administrative unit is the mayor's office. No, I don't, I'm not sure we need to add. I think, you know what I think, the, I don't think we should do anything further with it. And the reason I say that is, you know, these, you know how these general things are where you're asked to sort of get around in your, in your head, it kind of think about all the potential uh, fact patterns that could arise. And we basically told them, come back. We basically said if you were pers personally and substantially involved, well, obviously that would be through something that was involved in his administrative unit, right? He mm -hmm. wouldn't be personally and substantially involved in anything that wasn't. Otherwise, he was kind of out of his lane, which he wouldn't be. So I'm kind of thinking, um, since it's so sort of hypothetical at this stage, and we've told him to come back, yeah. if he has any you know, more fact-specific inquiries, I think it's fine to leave it as is. That's just my two cents worth right now, at least. I'm subject to being changing my mind, of course, if anyone, you know. <laughs> well, I, I think he, he had mentioned that he was on a selection committee for something mm -hmm. and that he would never participate in that again or whatever that selection, whatever contract or matter that. Yeah. Selection. So that sort of an, a, answers that issue as well. He, he seemed mm -hmm. to have a good, good awareness of where to draw some lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. So I, I agree with you, Lisa. Are we at a point where we can, are people comfortable with approving this with the few changes we talked about? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would move to approve opinion. Uh, request for advisory opinion 2021-4 uh, um, as written with the few editorial changes just discussed at the meeting. Second? Uh, I second, yeah. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Alright, motion passes. Becky, just for confirmation, was that a an aye on your end? Yeah, there was an aye on my end. Oh. <laughs> Alright, uh, so the next thing we have is a confidential uh, ethics complaint for a potential violation. Do we have a motion to move into executive session? So moved. Uh, second. Any objections? Hearing no objections, let's please move into executive session. Oh, no, no. Oh, oh no, we need to oh, oh, oh. oh, we can close, close the door. door for this is very exciting. Session. Session. It's a, yeah, it's, it's not, not first time in person. <laughs> what a symbol. <laughs> oh, we got, oh, we got well, recording. <laughs> the board is recording in open session. All right, we are back in open session. And uh, do we have a motion regarding um, ethics complaint for potential violation 2021-5? Yes, I'll make a motion. Uh, I'll move to have Member Goodstein draft a response dismissing a confidential ethics complaint for potential violation 2021-5 under 160A2B and G as discussed in deliberative session. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed no. 
All right, motion passes. Okay, so for volunteering to write that. So let's take a look then at what is next? This next one, huh? Uh, and this is also this is also confidential. This is also confidential. Okay, oh, no. so we have uh, a motion to move into executive session. Move to executive session. Uh, second. Second. Any objection? And you might want to say for 2021-6. Oh, yeah. 2021-6 six Could it be N possible to move for 6 and 7? Since we're going to be... I believe they're the... They're both confidential. I think it's two. Uh, oh, I'm yeah. not sure in terms of taping. I think that would be better to do one at a time, because then you're going to come out again. Okay. They're not related, are they? Yeah, they, they are. are. Oh, they they're are the same related. person, right? Same requester. Oh. I missed the second one. Was that sent earlier today? Was that the one? Mm -hmm. Yes, it came in oh, just yesterday. Gosh. So we're going to do both, or are we just going to do one? Can I suggest we do one? Okay, so um, so the motion on the table then is to move into executive session for 2021-6. Any objections to that motion? Nope. Hearing no objections, Madam Clerk, let's please move into executive session. The board is recording in open session again. Okay, we're back in open session, and uh, we are going to tentatively meet again at 11 o'clock on the 28th to uh, consider further uh, request for advisory 2021-6 and 2021-7. Uh, so that brings us to C, update on the uh, conflict of interest questions. I don't think we, we don't nope, have any we update. Have not progressed. No update. Very good. Uh, member comments? Well, it's not all my stuff. This is mine or this yours? This is mine. It's yours. Hang on, wait, okay, so aside from some rumbling, uh, <laughs> Sorry. <audience> participation, <laughs> <audience> participation. <laughs> okay, and so then, yeah, so we'll do our next meeting then, um, <clears throat> will be on the 28th, tentatively at 11 a.m. for one hour. Our next regular meeting will be on August 18th. Um, and then discuss meeting schedules September to December. Do you have your schedule yet for classes? Oh, shoot, I... You or you could do this in in August. I just kind of wanted to get it on your radar no, that you don't have anything scheduled beyond August. And um, I know Becky would wanted to talk about scheduling a little bit too, because the board, when she was on it prior, I believe Becky used to meet during the lunch hour. So anyway, you don't have anything scheduled between September and December, so that's open for the board to make it work for everyone. How best you see fit. Yeah, and I'm fine. I'm fine discussing it in August. I just when I had highlighted, I have a persistent conflict with an immutable. I have a I'm sort of I've been at a meeting with my direct supervisor that is a persistent conflict with this meeting. Um, as for schedules, I'm, before August, I may be able to try and make some movement on that in addition to um, and better inform this. But one, I, my, Terry, my recollection was previously, I felt like we used to revisit every time you had your teaching schedule for this semester. So I was hoping that maybe that would happen again and we could talk about it in alignment with what everyone, what worked for everyone going into the fall. Yeah, let me take a quick look at my schedule here. Yeah, I'm maybe unable to meet after about 2.45 starting at the school year. Since there's no childcare in the entire school. Same. Oh, geez, right. Yeah, let's not. I'm just sort of blocking that out of my brain right now. I know you right. All right, let's see. So I've got. Oh, let's see. Okay. So does this time work? Would people be able to do this time still? I Wednesday think the answer is no. Yeah. Yeah. No, the answer is no. Okay. Or we're not sure. Yeah. Okay, so. About 11.30 to 1.30 over the lunch hour. 11.30 to 1.30 on Wednesday, that, that's, better for me. that's better, yeah. I've got class then, so I've got of course you class do. Tuesday at 10, Wednesday at 11.30, Thursday at 11.30. In other words, my mornings to early afternoons are kind of... How long does that Tuesday class go? The Tuesday class, it's just an, Wait, hour and, uh, an hour and 15 minutes. Could we do... Tuesday? On what day are we talking about? Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, I think in general, right now. Yeah. Uh, I could do noon to two on Tuesday. Just on oh, Tuesday. Oh wait, that's not second order for me. Sorry. Or Monday. I have one o'clock Tuesday. 
T- Tuesdays are difficult for the clerk's office no. because we have assembly. Sure, meetings. right, okay. okay. So Wednesdays, I could either do, I mean, I could do 9, or I could do 9 to 11, or I could do, mm. you know, afternoon. I could do after 1 o'clock. And my classes, yeah, you know, so I could do after 1 o'clock. This is, in, we're talking about generality here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know why I'm having my time. In general, but um, September. September through December is where we're starting. Um, Wednesdays at 1 o'clock, you said? Wednesdays, I could do Wednesdays at 1 o'clock. No, no, I'm asking is that what you said. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not making a suggestion. Not I'm not proposing a suggestion uh, here. Mm. Yes, I could. I could the, do. The, I could job do, I would be. I've got my class at twelve forty-five, so I would be running probably just a couple. But you'd minutes have to leave late, here by two thirty. And Wednesdays at one actually makes my conflict worse. Like my <laughs> conflict is a one fifty to two fifteen conflict on Wednesdays, and so I, uh, moving into one. Working my conflict. Did, <laughs> Terry, did you say 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. on Wednesdays is a possibility? I could do nine on Wednesdays, 9 to 11, yeah. How do the other board members feel? About it's that? possible. I have an 8, a, I have a 8 if, a.m. every Wednesday week meeting, so what if, I can probably oh. rush over here. Sorry, sorry. No, no, no. I think I could do it. I think I could do it. I think I pull it off. What if we all take to into account... Uh, Terry, would you mind sending us your class schedule? Oh, that's a smart idea. And then yeah. maybe, because yeah, I, I think yeah, by August everyone will have to have child care issues yeah. figured we'll out, anyway. and then maybe we could yeah. take the... Yeah, yeah that's not that bad. Does that yeah. work for you guys, Becky and Lisa, on the phone? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's perfect. If we can kind of compile our immutable conflict yeah. by the <laughs> August meeting, and from there parse out where we have spaces that are free, I think that would be great. I will say Sounds one good. other thing. Um, and, and this is just a pipe dream right now, but I know Dee is, is working on the potential of making it where boards and commissions could meet again, meet virtually again. Um, so I know that that worked out well for a that lot of board members. Cool. Yeah. Um, so that's not off the table entirely. Right. All right. For the now that you've reminded me to get back to that. <laughs> yeah, Dee, how many of us actually need to be here physically to run? Is it a, is it a quorum and then everyone else could? Well, that's a, that's a possibility. How many children and pets and other dependents can we each bring? <laughs> so I will say, from our perspective, <laughs> from our perspective, careful guys, I have a lot either. of children, <laughs> <laughs> and they're young. We're saying free childcare. Is that 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 I'm hearing right now. All right, very good. Well, we'll look at the schedule then at, at our meeting on the 18th, and then uh, I think that's it. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. Second. Madam Clerk, we are here by adjourn. This big red...